visiting Sonya for some fruit and you get scammed, go for seafood and you're fleeced. Where's the justice in that? If you see an old lady selling fruit at night and feel sorry for her, save your sympathy for yourself or try placing your phone on their scale. One kilo more than a kilo is my phone a phone or a magic staff. We went to buy seafood, the scales were rigged, and ended up spending over 400 yuan. You take it to get cooked, a scallop costs one yuan, but the cooking fee is five yuan. Seafood for 400 yuan, cooking costs 600. We bought black tiger prawns. But what we got was a mix of tiger prawns and regular prawns. Isn't our money real money? A notable internet influencer has emphatically stated they would never visit Sanya, a city located at the southernmost tip of China's mainland in Hainan province. Despite its appeal as a winter getaway for many, Sanya has been plagued annually by service chaos and rampant overcharging. From fruit vendors to taxi drivers, almost everyone seems involved in these deceitful practices. This has led to a growing disinterest in visiting Sanya in recent years, with even locals choosing to relocate. In early 2023, following the easing of pandemic restrictions, Sanya's tourism industry hoped to recover from substantial losses incurred over the past three years. However, visitors have been shocked by exorbitant prices. Mineral water, usually priced at 1 yuan, soared to 15 to 21 yuan per bottle during the winter season. Small hotels, typically costing 50 to 100 yuan, increased their rates to 800 to 1,000 yuan. And larger hotels that usually charge 1,000 to 2,000 yuan per night raised their prices to 10 to 20,000 yuan, which is 1,400 to 2,800 US dollars. A tourist in Sanya struggled to find a coffee shop on the street and resorted to ordering online, only to find a single type of coffee priced at 50 yuan per cup. Even fast food chains like McDonald's and KFCs in Sanya have prices far exceeding those in other regions. Renting a luxury villa in Sanya for 20 days could cost up to 80,000 yuan, with a daily rent of 4,000 yuan. However, the conditions of these villas is often poor, with second-hand or damaged amenities making the stay unbearable. After three years of pandemic lockdowns, people came to Sanya with their savings, hoping for a pleasant winter holiday. However, many found themselves quickly out of money and in debt, with credit card bills amounting to tens of thousands of yuan. Aside from a few five-star hotels, most tourist services in Sanya are of poor quality but come at a high price. Tour guides often use deceptive tactics to promote sales such as offering free foot massage to push medicines or family secret remedies. High kickbacks at shopping spots are also an issue, with up to 70% on crystal products and 60% on pearls, even though these items are often marked up significantly. Ticket pricing at attractions is another concern. For instance, the official listed price for Nantian Ecology Beijing Grand View Garden is 128 yuan, but the actual cost for travel agency is only 8 yuan. While the government mandates a minimum discount of 20% for travel agencies, some ticket prices have been discounted to as low as 10% or even zero in practice. Stores targeting foreign tourists sell counterfeit Mao Tai liquor, deceiving them into thinking it's genuine. Even bus drivers are involved in these practices, recommending specific tourist spots and restaurants to earn high kickbacks. Public bus drivers in Sanya are also implicated in overcharging tourists, recommending specific tourist spots and restaurants with the aim of earning high commissions. For instance, both Nantian Ecology Beijing Grand View Garden and Tianya Haijiao are along the Route 16 bus line, with drivers tend to recommend Nantian over Tianya Haijiao due to higher kickbacks. On the return trip, they suggest Tianya Haijiao but through a different entrance involving a boat ride, again to receive commissions. When returning from Tianya Haijiao to the city, drivers began promoting seafood restaurants, offering to stop right in front of them. They will call ahead and upon arrival, restaurant staff will be alerted by the bus horn, welcoming the tourist in and noting the bus plate number to give the driver a 40% kickback. The situation is truly disheartening. In mid-November 2023, typically a peak tourist season, Sanya saw only a tenth of its usual visitor numbers. Even when large hotels in Sanya offered rooms at 400 to 500 yuan per night through live streaming promotions, there were few takers. Hotel owners report a significant drop in occupancy compared to the previous year, facing daily losses. Operators in yachting and dining sectors also report not making profits, with many restaurants experiencing low patronage. Once busy places like the Damal Tunnel now see smooth traffic, reflecting the stark decrease in tourists. 
Seaside duty-free shops and nightlife district are no longer bustling, and even ride-hailing drivers complain about not earning more than 100 yuan a day. Sanya does not appear among the top 18 popular cities on Douyin this year, indicating a substantial impact on its tourism sector and the city's economic vitality. In this context, Hainan's leadership faces a critical choice in addressing the systemic issue of overcharging. Direct intervention would trigger strong pushbacks and even protests from those in the tourism sector. Consequently, the leadership prefers to shift focus to areas like real estate development. This not only generates quick results but also involves local wealthy individuals facilitating project advancement while providing additional economic benefits to the leadership and their relatives. This strategy, however, fails to address the long-term issues in the tourism sector, leading to Hainan having the highest housing price-to-income ratio in China. Ordinary wage earners, even without spending on anything else, would need to work for 50 years to afford a house. Currently, property prices in Hainan have reached 50,000 yuan per square meter, surpassing major cities like Shenzhen, Guangzhou and Nanjing. Besides exorbitant housing prices, high nine faces fraud in real estate transactions. Some agencies lure buyers from the northeast with discounted properties only to find these sold out, leaving only options at double or higher prices. Some buyers are enticed to purchase properties in remote, undeveloped areas only to find them deserted with hardly anything but mosquitoes and livestock. Once popular developments are now empty, with closed shops, deserted children's playgrounds and malls, this leaves many property owners in distress. Meanwhile, northerners who rent in Shanghai for the winter face similar challenges. Many referred by acquaintances find the accommodation substandard and inconvenient, even struggling to buy groceries. Their disappointment is compounded by those who referred them benefiting from kickbacks. Consequently, many from the northeast are turning to other winter destinations like Lijiang and Zhangjiang, known for their beautiful scenery and pleasant climate. From 2015 to 2018, about 80% of northerners choose to leave Sanya for coastal areas in southern Guangdong. Local residents in Sanya are not immune to being overcharged. For instance, a netizen inquiring about fish prices at a market encountered exorbitant pricing, with fish costing up to 600 yuan per jing, which is half a kilogram. Any objections would lead to physical intimidation. Given these circumstances, tourists who initially planned to visit Sanya for the winter are finding Southeast Asia more appealing. With its distinct culture and cross-national cuisine at reasonable prices, Southeast Asia offers a more enjoyable experience than Sanya. Here, a single cup of coffee costs 50 yuan. In Southeast Asia, cold drinks and snacks are generally under 10 yuan, with coconut ice at 4 yuan, a whole durian at 30 yuan, and mangoes at 5 yuan per kilogram, making it a much more pleasant and affordable option. A meal consisting of four dishes in Sabah costs only 400 yuan, whereas a similar meal in Sanya can be as high as 1,500 yuan. In Lan Kwai, Malaysia, a small building with two to four units, each 50 to 80 square meters, costs 1,200 yuan per night, offering a private beach and walking distance to commercial streets. This is considered a high price for festive seasons, while sea view rooms usually cost only 800 to 1,000 yuan. A stark contrast to Sanya's 10,000 yuan per night, which is almost 1,400 US dollars. In Malaysia, a day tour including snorkeling, sea outings, and night tours of tropical rainforests to watch fireflies costs around 200 yuan, 28 US dollars. The local guides provide an excellent snorkeling experience, and the chance to see fireflies in a dark rainforest is a unique and dreamlike experience, free from light pollution and pressures to buy souvenirs. In contrast, snorkeling near Sanya Yalong Bay can cost 500 to 1,000 yuan, which is 70 to 140 US dollars, for less than an hour, making it a poor value for money. Moreover, the water quality in Sanya is inferior to that in Southeast Asia. The Wujizhou Island Reserve, considered the best diving spot in Sanya, offers little in terms of marine life visibility and suffers from murky waters and poor visibility. In comparison, the seabed at Boho Island in the Philippines, though not ideal, is significantly better in terms of marine ecology. In 1997, Yalong Bay in Sanya was famous for its clear waters and visibility of up to 20 meters. Around 2000, one could take a submarine to a depth of 5 meters and clearly see vibrant coral reefs. 
However, with the opening of the Ritz-Carlton in 2008 and the establishment of a new nuclear submarine base hosting the 094 Strategic Nuclear Submarines, environmental pollution worsened. Just four years later, Yalom Bay's coral resources were nearly depleted. This increase in environmental pressures not only represents a crisis for the natural ecosystem, but also reflects deeper issues in Hainan province's economic policies. The focus on tourism and real estate development has led to a significant neglect of environmental protection and sustainable development. Hainan's persistently high prices are rooted in the unidimensional economic policy. Historically, the province focused on deindustrialization, emphasizing agriculture and tourism. Major development opportunities were often controlled by capital and eventually shifted towards real estate development, leaving behind economic bubbles and chaos. Hainan's current economic structure, lacking industry, factories and a real economy, Economy, relies almost solely on tourism and real estate. In Hainan, apart from a few agriculture activities like betel nut and fruit cultivation, there are few significant economic sources. For instance, in Haiko, ordinary jobs typically pay between 3,500 and 4,800 yuan, while a monthly salary of 8,000 yuan is considered high. Surprisingly, even local residents buying fruit grown in their region pay higher prices than in Beijing. This is partly due to Hainan's heavy resilience on imported goods as the lack of a land connection with mainland China makes it difficult to resell these imports, resulting in high business cost and general price inflation. The Chinese Communist Party's development model for Hainan focused on tourism and agriculture has not brought significant economic benefits to local residents. Low wages forces residents to rely on overcharging tourists for their livelihood. Although ticket sales and accommodation seem profitable, most of these revenues do not flow into the local community. Attractions require substantial initiative investments, often in the billions, and may take decades to recoup cost. These investments are mostly made by large enterprises or state-owned companies. While ticket revenues may seem substantial, they are mainly used to maintain daily operations and recover initial investments, with ongoing needs to update and maintenance. Thus, despite the profitability of attractions, the local populace rarely benefits. Additionally, the high investment required to establish restaurants and hotels is almost an impossible task for local natives. Most accommodations are provided by operating groups of attractions, usually large or state-owned enterprises, leaving very limited income for local residents. In China, core revenue sectors in tourism include major transportation like airplanes and trains, attractions, hotels and shopping centers. These sectors require substantial capital investment involving external investors or owners. Local residents are unable to share in the profits and relegated to selling labor, such as boatmen, bus drivers and wait staff. Therefore, tourism's actual effect on poverty alleviation for local residents is limited, with their likelihood of achieving economic independence and wealth being minimal. Sanya and Hainan Island, as some of China's few tropical seaside tourist destinations, naturally attract the country's 1.4 billion population, representing a huge development opportunity. However, the Chinese Communist Party's management of Hainan's development has been marked by numerous oversights, extensive management and a lack of refined strategies. This has led to Sanya's facing exorbitant hotel room fees, rampant fraud in the market and dying corals in the sea. The savings accumulated over three years of the pandemic dissipate within 10 days. Large tourism investment projects have not provided advancement opportunities for local residents. The dilemma in Sanya is not just limited to one city but reflects broader policy failures and management flaws guided by the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm.